So let's take a few moments to talk about damage from earthquakes. This section should be pretty easy. We've got this video and the next one to kind of cover damage. So obviously, the severity of the shaking and damage is going to depend on how strong the earthquake is, how far away you are, right, from the hypocenter, and how long the shaking lasts. So most of the time when the shaking occurs, it's only going to happen for, you know, 30 seconds, maybe 45, maybe a minute. However, in Alaska, right, in the Great Alaskan Earthquake, we saw that shaking last for two whole minutes, right? That's a really long earthquake. So the longer the earthquake, the stronger the earthquake, right, the more damage that you're going to see. That should pretty much make sense there. And, of course, the type of rock that you have that you built on. So obviously, if you build a house on top of sand or loose sediment, right, like we have down here, fortunately we don't get big earthquakes, and we get a huge earthquake, right, well, the ground's going to shake a lot easier than if you were on solid land. So some types of after effects you can get from an earthquake. You can get landslides and avalanches. Um, this is obviously very common in California, especially where there's high amounts of rainfall, right, making the ground saturated with water and easier to shake. Um, so here you can see, right, this house that has had the unfortunate event of breaking in half. Liquefaction is, in my opinion, the coolest of all of the effects that you can get from an earthquake. So what happens with liquefaction is let's say right before a major earthquake, it's rained really hard, and the ground is saturated with water. So what will happen if you get a big earthquake is that sediment will temporarily go into suspension in the water, and it will all become liquid. So the ground will turn into, quite literally, liquid for a few moments while the shaking is going on. So if you were to step on it, you were to sink. So this is how quick sand or quick mud or quick clay, right, that's how this happens. So it doesn't really occur like in the movies where you're just stumbling into the forest and all of a sudden, oh, you find quicksand, right? It, ha it usually occurs right after a, a major earthquake like that. But as you can imagine, right, if you have buildings, like we see here, that are right on top of an area um, that was saturated and your buildings are not very well anchored and the ground goes, turns into a liquid, right, well, you can see your buildings are going to fall down. So that can be a major, major problem. Fire is also a major consequence of earthquakes because when the ground shakes, sometimes gas lines and water lines break. So if your gas line breaks and you've got all this gas flowing out in, uh, above ground and it catches on fire, but you have no access to water, Right, obviously that can make big fires. So this can be a, a pretty big issue sometimes. Tsunamis are by far one of the biggest and most dangerous uh, after effects from an earthquake. And as we've seen in the relatively recent past here, that they definitely affect a lot of people. So what happens here essentially is just simple displacement. So here, for example, right, we've had an earthquake that occurred. Right? And my fault moved. Well, this area moved down, this block went up, so when it moves, that water is going to move with it. You can, you can simply do this um, next time you're taking a bath or doing dishes. Put your hand in the water and pull your hand straight down. You're going to notice on either side of your hand that water is going to move up and out of the way. And that's essentially what a tsunami is. Right? So you're just displacing the water and that water is moving out of the way. So what happens is as that water moves out of the way, you don't really notice a tsunami down here in the deep water because it's not interacting with the ocean floor. However, when you start to come up that continental shelf, that wave is going to get taller and taller and taller because the ground is physically pushing it upwards. And that's when you start to see the earthquake. Um, there's been quite a few major tsunamis. In the last um, 10 years or so, there's... There's been a lot of damage and a lot of deaths due from tsunamis. So um, tsunamis, being able to predict a tsunami to see when it's coming and how big it is, is obviously of huge importance, um, especially, right, if you live in a coastal area, which we are not immune to tsunamis either. Fortunately, we don't get uh, anything major, so, so that's definitely a good thing there. But tsunamis move across the ocean floor really fast, and that's, 
that's the big thing there. Um, they move quite literally at jetliner speed. So, and the problem, since you can't see them in deep water, right, you might be hanging out on the beach like you see in this picture, and all, all of a sudden this huge wave is racing towards you. Well, obviously that can be a big problem, right? If there's no tsunami warning signs uh, um, or alerts, you're not going to know to get out of the way. So being able to pay attention to your surroundings and your environment, and pay attention to knowing when there's earthquakes out in the middle of the ocean that can, that can produce tsunamis is pretty important. So what's the difference between wind waves and tsunami waves? Right? Well, wind waves, right, which we are very good at knowing from storm surge, they really only influence the upper part of the ocean. Whereas you can see in a tsunami, it really influences the entire ocean. Right? You're just not going to physically see it until you come up onto the continental shelf. Um, the wavelengths are much longer right, for a tsunami because it's affecting a larger area. And the... And if for a wave, right, the height of the wave is going to be, for a wind-driven wave, the height and the speed and the intensity of the wave is totally dependent on the wind. So the stronger the wind blows, the taller the wave, the farther it can go, so on and so forth. However, wind speed has no effect here on this. This is all driven by displacement. Um, so tsunami waves are much more destructive, right, than are storm surges or wind waves. Uh, as, as you might have uh, been around for, right, in 2004, there was a very large earthquake in the Indian Ocean. There was a huge earthquake, right, that preceded this. Uh, I mean, 9.0, that's pretty major. And when you get that snapback effect that we talked about, you're displacing a lot of water at that point. And what happens is you get these big waves that come in, Right, and there, I mean, look at the look at the size of this wave. It's pretty impressive. Um, that wave can reach very far into the land, and it can kill quite a lot of people.